This is one of the most desirable and upscale subdivisions in all of South Salem. We are walking around the community of Bailey Ridge and we're going to be talking about why people are moving into this community, but more importantly, why people might be moving out of this community. Most of my clients who are focusing their search on the Bailey Ridge community tend to want a few things. First of all, they tend to want a house that's over 2,000 square feet. They want to live in a newer community, but more importantly, they have a budget of over $650,000. If all of that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around because we are gonna be talking all about the pros and cons of living in the Bailey Ridge community. My name is Clarity Odd and I'm a local real estate agent here in Salem who focuses on working with buyers who are relocating to Salem. If that sounds like you and you're ready to chat more about buying house and relocating to Salem, Oregon, book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. You can do that by going to the link in the description of this video or scanning this QR code right here. All right, let's jump into talking about the pros and cons of Bailey Ridge. The first con on our list about living in Bailey Ridge is that it's very hard to get into Bailey Ridge. So this community and subdivision only has just slightly over 150 houses total. So that means at any given time, you can expect maybe one, two, if you're lucky, three or four homes to be listed for sale. So if you can get into this community, great. But if you really love this community and your heart is set on living very specifically within Bailey Ridge, make sure that you are mindful of your timelines and that you have a little bit of time to sit on the sidelines and wait for a house in this community to pop up on the market. The next con on our list is that this community doesn't tend to have have very much variation so it is a little bit more cookie cutter in nature and that's not necessarily a bad thing it just means that don't expect there to be a lot of unique character filled homes this community was built in two separate phases by Sandstrom and Polish those are two local builders here in Oregon and each of them didn't have very much variation in the home styles, the floor plans. So do be mindful that if you want a character filled home, you're not gonna find that in this community. The houses are gonna tend to look very similar. The floor plans are all gonna be very similar. And that's just what you get for Bailey Ridge. The next con on our list is that this is an HOA community. Now the dues for this community as of the filming of this video, which is 2024, the beginning of the summer, the dues were just under $500 per year. So that's not too bad, but if you're somebody who doesn't like the idea of living in an HOA community, you don't like the idea of rules and regulations and CC&Rs, then this isn't going to be the community for you. The next con on our list is the location of Bailey Ridge. So Bailey Ridge is located in what I'm gonna call Deep South Salem. Technically, it's just called South Salem but there is one road in and one road out of Bailey Ridge and that is River Road. River Road is right alongside the Willamette River, but if for whatever reason River Road is shut down, it's congested, there's traffic, you're just gonna be SOL unfortunately because River Road is the only access point in and out of Bailey Ridge and in and out of Salem connecting the two. The next con on our list is that there are no amenities in or nearby Bailey Ridge. So you are going to be 100% car dependent in this neighborhood. That's not necessarily a bad thing if you don't mind driving, but just know that you're not gonna just be able to walk into downtown Salem or walk to your grocery store. You will need to have a car in this community. Now, because this neighborhood is located in deep South Salem off of River Road, you are a little bit more detached from things like Interstate 5 than a lot of the other neighborhoods in South Salem. So to get to Interstate 5, it could take you 25 to 40 minutes just depending on traffic. So if you're somebody who's depending on Interstate 5 for work, for commuting, for leisure, whatever the case, do know that it's going to take you a little bit longer to get out of this community and over on to Interstate 5. The next con on our list is that Bailey Ridge is fairly expensive compared to the average home in Salem. So right now, at the filming of this video, the average home sold for $430,000. 
Bailey Ridge, you're gonna need to expect to spend upwards of 650,000 to get into this neighborhood. Now, if you have a remodeled home in this community, you're gonna need to expect to spend even more than $650,000 to get into one of those remodeled homes. If you're finding value in this video so far, give it a thumbs up and go down to the comments and tell me why you think Bailey Ridge could be the next place for you to move into. All right, we've talked about the cons. Now let's jump over to the pros of living in Bailey Ridge. The first pro on our list is that this is a newer community. So like I mentioned earlier, this area was constructed in two phases by two separate builders. The first phase started in 2006 and the second phase, which is the one that we're walking in right now, was completed in 2017. So this is a much newer community, although it is not a new construction community. What's really great about that is you tend to have more mature landscaping and the trees have had time to grow up and so you have really nice foliage throughout this community. The two builders within this community were Sandstrom and Polish. Those are two Oregon builders and they build great houses. The next pro on our list is that this community has one story living and two-story living. So I know a lot of you who are watching this love the idea of single-story living without any stairs. And so this community provides that, but it also provides two-story living as well. So that's a huge pro for a lot of people is that there are variations in the floor levels that you can find within this community. The next pro on our list is that this community has bigger houses. So you can expect to find almost all of the houses here are over 2,000 square feet. That is really great, especially considering that these houses tend to have a little bit of a front yard and a little bit of a backyard. So not only are the interiors of the house larger and over 2,000 square feet, but you can also expect to find backyards that are a decent size in this neighborhood. And I know that just from firsthand experience with my own clients who are looking for new construction, that's one of the hangups that we're finding here in Salem is that a lot of the new construction in Salem doesn't provide you with a large backyard. And it's not to say that these are like the biggest of backyards that you can find in Salem, not at all, but they are larger than what we're seeing in the very new brand spanking new construction going on in South Salem. The next pro on our list is that this is just a well-maintained and manicured community. It looks good in this community. There are always landscapers, which actually it was pretty hard to find an area within this community to walk around where there wasn't a lawnmower going and landscapers landscaping. So do know that this is very well maintained community. People take care of their yards. They have beautiful manicured gardens and bushes and trees. And that's a huge highlight for a lot of people who check out this community. Next pro on our list is that the two builders, Sandstrom and Polish, who came into this community and built it up, well, they selected luxury finishes for these houses. So expect cherry wood throughout the home, expect granite, marble, and gourmet kitchens. And that's really a hallmark of this community is you're not just purchasing in any old subdivision. This is considered a luxury subdivision in South Salem. The next pro on our list is that this community actually has a little tiny semi-developed park on Tayside Road, which is kind of the edge of this community. Um, it's really great for like walking the dog, but it is five acres and it's a park right at the edge of this neighborhood, which I know for all of my dog lovers out there is a huge highlight. The next pro on our list is that this is a really great community if maybe you and your partner have two different locations for where you work. Maybe one of you works in downtown Salem, maybe the other one works in Independence, or Monmouth and this is a really great community to be right in the middle of both of those locations. So earlier I was mentioning that this is a little bit far from Interstate 5, it's a little bit far from downtown Salem, but just depending on your own life circumstance that might be a really great highlight because you are so close to Independence, Monmouth, Dallas, and so if you have a household that you know needs to get to both of those places, this is a prime location and community for that. The next pro on our list is that this community is actually right next door to a, another luxury community called Illahi Hills. Within Illahi, you have Illahi Country Club, which is a membership only golf course, but there's also a restaurant there, there's a pool if you're a member. And so if you like the idea of playing golf, 
great. You are gonna be right next door to one of Salem's premier golf course communities. The next pro on our list is that this is a community that is far from downtown Salem. As the crow flies, not so much, but when you're driving on River Road, it's a little bit cumbersome to get into the community. community. But the pro side of that is this is a very private community, but it is still connected to city utilities. So you've got city water, city sewer in this community, even though you're a little bit further outside of Salem proper. The next pro on our list is that you're fairly close to Minto Brown Park and Minto Island Growers. So that means that Minto Island Growers, you're gonna find a farmer's market there, which is gonna be a great stop for you to go get fresh produce every week. Um, but you're also close to Minto Brown Park, which is great if you have a dog because there's an off-leash dog area and it's like the biggest park that you can walk in. And that actually connects to downtown Salem. So if you wanted to start your walk in Minto Brown closer to your house here in Bailey Ridge and then walk into downtown, you could totally do that. It would be a little bit of a long walk, but I mean, walking is the best kind of exercise you can do if you're gonna do exercise, right? At least I think so. <laughs> if you like the idea of living in Bailey Ridge and you want to chat more about what this community is like, what current houses are up for sale here, book that one-on-one -on -one consultation with me so that we can start chatting about the details. You can book that consultation with me by going to the link in the description below. My clients who are gravitating towards Bailey Ridge, they tend to have a few things in common. The first is that their budget is over $650,000. And the second thing that people are really focusing on is that this is close to downtown, but it feels removed and it is more private than a lot of other communities in South Salem. The third thing that they all have in common is that they're looking for houses over 2,000 square feet, typically with four bedrooms or more. All right, let's go jump online and check out some of the recently sold homes in the Bailey Ridge community. We are checking out Bailey Ridge, which is highlighted and circled right here. But before we dive into checking out these recently sold homes, let's zoom out a little bit to provide some context about where this neighborhood is located. So right here is Bailey Ridge. This little blue squiggle is the Willamette River, and that also travels throughout downtown Salem, which is located right here. Earlier, I was mentioning that Bailey Ridge is gonna be a really great place for anyone who has work in Monmouth or Independence, and those areas are located right here. So you can see that Bailey Ridge is almost smack dab in the middle of downtown Salem, and then the Independence and Monmouth area. I was also mentioning earlier that the, there's one road in and run, one road out of uh, Bailey Ridge. That is going to be River Road, which is this white line right here. River Road can take you all the way from downtown Salem into Independence. There's a little bridge that you cross right here, but if anything happens on River Road or if it is congested, you're really just kind of stuck and relegated to using River Road. You do have some side streets here, but do be mindful that River Road, that is going to be your main street if you live in Bailey Ridge. During the video, um, there was a train that passed by and you could hear its engine going. This line right here, that straight line, very, very faint gray line, get a little bit closer here. That train track is active. And that is a con that I should have mentioned, but thankfully um, the train was passing by, so it, it announced itself, but that is a con. So here's the train track, be mindful of that. And let's dive in to talking a little bit more specifically about Bailey Ridge. So earlier I was mentioning that there were two phases of development within this community, and there were two distinct separate builders in this community. So let's talk about that. Let me actually zoom out a little bit better. So you can see here that there's this blank space here. This is the dividing line between phase one and phase two. So phase one is this area right here. And this is gonna have more mature trees. It's a little bit more lush feeling. And the houses look like this one right here on Aberdeen. So that style is very, very conducive to the Sandstrom builders who, those are the people that built these style houses. Their color palette tends to be a little bit darker. You can have, um, or you see that they have a little bit more stone and natural wood coloring towards their houses. 
and that's very much just their style. Now, this, these are the houses that were built closer to 2007 onward. So again, older community, this is what they look like, and that area is right here. The latest community, which was constructed by Polish, is this section right here, and that was the area that I was walking around in. This house right here is a great example of a Polish, uh, a Polish built home. The color palette tends to be a little bit lighter, a little bit more muted, and doesn't have these super rich kind of colors going on. And so this was phase two. These are the houses that were constructed towards, it wrapped up construction in 2017. So these are going to be the newer houses here. And this is the area that I was walking around in. Um, and talking at you earlier. This green part, that is the park that I was telling you about that's a little bit undeveloped. It's great for walking the dog and is five acres. So let's take a closer look at the last, or the um, homes that sold in this community within the last year. So in a year's time, only 10 houses sold in this community. Now, if I go back far enough, if I were to say, let's check out the previous two years, there are houses that are above the 650 mark, but for this example in the past year, all of the houses, the max sales price has been 650, but do expect that those prices are going to be higher if you start looking at a home in this community now. So let's check out some of these houses. Again, this is gonna be the Polish home build and it's over 2000 square feet, just like almost every single house in this community. And Polish is really known for having open floor plans, really great finishes. This one is a very light and bright example. They've got a little jungle gym in the backyard, gas fireplace. We've got just the classic dark wood um, kitchen here that matches the floors, granite countertops, very, very polished design. And polish as in the builder, not like it is polished, although it probably is. So these are big houses. This is just under 3,000 square feet. I want to get to the backyard. Here we go. So one thing I want to highlight again and emphasize again is that brand new construction in South Salem, the backyards tend to be a little bit smaller at this price point. But what I really like about Bailey Ridge is that the backyards, while they are not like the biggest ever, they are a decent size for the size of house that comes with it. So that's a huge highlight of this area. Here's a great um, bird's eye view. You can see the backyard. And then you also have a little bit of a front yard. So it's manageable. It's not, you know, you don't need to get a, a riding lawnmower or anything like that. Okay, so this is a polished design. Let's go back and check out the Sandstrom design. And again, this is gonna be just a little bit older. These houses were constructed uh, closer to 2007. You see a lot more cherry wood in these houses, but again, the finishes on the interiors are high end. Beautiful tall cabinets. You've got granite countertops. Very quintessential Sandstrom design. And let's get to the backyard. Love dual vanity sinks because y'all know that we, us ladies, deserve our own damn sink. Here we go. Okay, backyard again. So this is another example of like, look, you've got a big old house and it also comes with a decent size backyard. This one, oh, I love this photo. So this one, it, this is not really a hilly community, but um, some of the houses are a little bit kind of terraced above the previous row of homes. And this is a perfect example. So this house is from the second floor, a little bit above these guys. And you can look out into the Willamette Valley. This is fog that you see rolling in here. Um, and it is close to the Willamette River. So that's why it's a much more foggy area in the winter and springtime. It's just gorgeous. I love that. Okay, let's go back and just um, check out some of the other houses lightly real quick. So again, Sandstrom, Polish, two separate builders, two very distinct 
designs. So again, if you like this community, phase one or phase two, make sure that you have time on your side because it sometimes takes a little bit of time for houses to pop up on the market. And um, I'm not gonna show you the houses that are for sale right now on the market, but there are a handful that are for sale right now. There's actually four, which I'm like super Jones about. Um, great for my clients. But anyways, this is what the houses look like in the Bailey Ridge community. So we just wrapped up our online search of Bailey Ridge. Let's go hop in the car and drive around this community together. I'm actually driving on River Road and turning into Bailey Ridge. So here's a little bit of context about like, what does River Road look like? And then what does it actually look like when you turn into Bailey Ridge? Um, I'm starting in the phase one development, which is the Sandstrom built houses. As a reminder, these homes were start, they started construction in 2007. And you can just see right off of the bat, like this is gonna be a much more lush area. The trees are older, they're bigger, the vegetation is just more grown. And then the color palette for the houses, Sandstrom has a much more earthy, deep, rich color palette. And they also use more wood, uh, wood coloring and just like natural wood finishes and stone and so that's going to be a big difference between phase one which is the one that we're in now and then the later phase which we'll get to um, in a bit but some of these houses you can see on the left hand side they do have stairs going up there is not this isn't like a huge hilly area you can see you know at the end of this cul-de-sac here there's a slight elevation and that is why some of the homes are kind of um up a few different stair levels but i would not call this like a hilly area by any means it's pretty darn flat and same with river, river road when you drive in here it's pretty darn flat which i for sure appreciate because i hate driving on hills like the whole entire concept it's just terrible and the reason why i hate it is because we do have um ice storms here sometimes not every year in the winter but we do get them and if there's an ice storm i mean the city just shuts down like you're not going to want to find yourself driving on a hill in an ice storm that is just a recipe for a disaster we are turning onto Tayside Road. So to the right side, we have that park that I was talking about earlier that is five acres, really not very developed. It's more of like a walking area for the dogs. And then on the left side, we still have that phase one development, um, which was the Sandstrom construction. And as I go through here, you can just see like, there's a lot of people walking, there's a lot of dogs, there's a lot of landscapers. And I really wanna emphasize that this is one of only a handful of communities where I feel like the HOA fees are pretty nominal. They are under $500 a year, but the quality and um, attention to like the landscaping of everyone's house people take really good care of their gardens and maintain everything very beautifully. And that is kind of a unique combination. Usually when you see these really manicured communities, the HOA dues are incredibly high and the HOA, you know, does a lot of that manicuring. But I think it just is a testament to the people that move into this community. They really value having a well-maintained community. The other thing I noticed when I was driving around um, this area doing these driving tours is there was a lot of people out and about. Like a lot of people had their garages open. I saw a lot of kiddos playing in the garage or hanging out with their parents on the sidewalk. And I think that that is really sweet to see because it gives you a taste and an idea of like what is the vibe of this neighborhood. Also a lot of dog walkers. Um, that's pretty much every neighborhood in Salem. Like we really like our dogs here in I think just Oregon in general. Like it's not just a Salem thing. Just in Oregon we really love 
dogs. <laughs> All right, we are going down the first street that we actually pulled into. We're just going the other direction. You can see that there is a house for sale. Um, there's a coming soon listing in here that I was just driving by and I saw the sign. It's, it's not my listing or anything, but I thought that was pretty nifty because that means that there's gonna be a total of four houses for sale in this community at the time that I filmed this anyways, but you know, that's subject to change lickety split. And all of the listings are over $650,000 right now. So really like your budget needs to be minimum 650 to get into this community, but really expect that price tag to go up if you are looking for a larger house or an updated house or one kind of further away from River Road where it's up higher on the hill. So keep that in mind. Um, I don't really have anything else to say like until we get to the next phase of this community. Um, oh, your mail, it does not go directly to your house. There are gonna be little community mailboxes. Aha, uh -huh, like the one on the right, right here. That's a community mailbox. And that's pretty typical for newer construction in Salem nobody really has their own mailbox anymore um, unless it's like in an older neighborhood so there's the park straight ahead again you can kind of get an idea it's just like a walking park no jungle gym or anything like that so now we are driving on tie side and um or tay side and we're getting to the phase two development which is built by polish and these are phase two houses. So you're gonna notice a big difference because the trees aren't as big, the landscaping is not as lush and robust. And that's simply because these houses, they completed construction in 2017. So they're newer, the plants are younger, um, and you can really see as we're driving around here, it's just not as canopied from the foliage. These houses, unlike the Sandstrom houses, which was in the previous little part of this neighborhood, the color palette tends to be a little bit more beige, light gray, and not as deep earthy tones. This phase two community is the smaller section of the Bailey Ridge neighborhood. So there's not as many houses in this phase two development, but you are still gonna see the single story living, you're gonna see the two story living, but you can just really tell like the outside exteriors are very different from the phase one. And I think they all look dang good. My only gripe is like, I really love trees. And so my personal preference would be to live in phase one because you just have more trees going on. Um, there is a little walking path that connects these two phases together and we'll drive past it at some point and I'll point it out but um, they're just really great houses in this community very well built both builders have great reputations the finishes on the interiors are always beautiful stunning people take great care of the inside of their houses and the outside I'm always impressed when I go check out these houses it's like oh yeah these people they really like to maintain the insides too which I fudgin love, 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 love. There's another set of mailboxes. This is the area that I was walking around and talking earlier on, um, like when I was going over the pros and cons, this is the spot that I was in. Oh, there's the little walking path there that connects the two. Um, there must be a lot of like remodelings going on right now because that was the second porta potty that I had seen dropped off in this community. And I guess that just means that people are maybe remodeling to get ready to list their house for sale. I don't know. <laughs> All right, we are gonna be pulling up to the um, park again. So straight ahead, that is where the park is. We are on Tayside um, and just at the very edge of the community. If we were to continue straight on this road, we would run, oh, there's my dogs we would run into Illahi, which is where the golf course is, which is where the country club is, very well-known community in South Salem. That's another luxury community. The houses are fudging amazing because they're super quirky and old. Uh, we are gonna pull straight down this road and we're gonna run into River Road, and that's the access point to and from 
Bailey Ridge. If you guys like this video and you want more information about Bailey Ridge, make sure you're reaching out to me and scheduling that one-on-one -on -one consultation so I can chat and help you develop a plan to get in to Bailey Ridge. Okay, bye. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna wanna watch this one next. Bye, friends.